Lisa Del Pitt, Functional MRI and Other People's Children. This is a short way of describing the latest, the frontier on how kids learn. We're learning so much thanks to the functional MRI. It takes a picture of what's happening in your brain. And so while it's taking those pictures, they, they can ask you, okay, what's 45 divided by four? Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult because we know that 45 times 11 is 44, but we've got 45 divided by four, so now you've got, uh, it's like 11.25, right? Okay. What's going on inside my mind during that time, it's lighting up a certain area. So they decided, okay, uh, Steve, when you are talking in French, are you using the same part of your brain as when you are talking in English. And, quand je parle un peu en français, quando hablo en espagnol, is vine gutstinitsa drujba, tavarische, or if I say spasiba, or um, jambo habari, Missouri sana, indigo, and quaheri yakuanana. Each of these is in a different area than my native area, okay? Then the, where you learn your native speech is kind of like the central point. And then most of your second languages is grown in neurons elsewhere, okay? That's the theory. What happens when a kid who speaks non-standard English. I'd be going now. Um, ask me something else, Mr. Mac. Ask me. Um, I, uh, first I fell on the flow and then I went out the dough. Now, when I was first trained, I was told you must teach kids standard English. If they don't learn it in school, what will happen when they try to get a job? If they don't speak a standard English, they'll never be hired by Disney or any place that deals with the public. I mean, we're here in Fort Lauderdale, and hotels and tour operators, they have to speak a clear English because visitors are expecting clear English, not mumbling, not... Uh, jive talking or whatever you call it, right? So when I, I'm 51 years old, and so for I've been a teacher since 26, 25. Oh my God! Yeah, 25 years, 26 to 20. 25 years I have been teaching kids and correcting them. How do we say that again? You know, I perhaps I'm not saying it like you're wrong. Is there another way to say that, is how I currently say it. But the way I should say it is, hmm, um, I'd be going now. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be there. I'd be there tomorrow, right? How do you say that in standard English? That should be the new way we correct because the old way was that's not correct how do we say that correctly now what this does apparently according to Lisa Del Pitt with other people's children kids who speak non-standard English should be treated as people like uh, who speak Spanish in the home or Creole if I have a Haitian student, I know that they speak Creole in the home, I'm going to speak differently to that kid than I am to a kid who, whose parents speak English, it's just a non-standard English. If I say, that's not correct, I'd be going now. You say, I am going now, or 
I need to go, right? If I say it like, you're wrong, that's not the right way to do it. Say that properly. I'm negating the person's culture. This is the way you have to sort of think about it. Um, if, however, I say, how do we say that in standard English? Subtly what I'm saying is, you speak a different kind of English than I do. You speak a kind of English that allows you to walk in a circle that I can't walk in. So I'm respecting your English. It is a dialect. It is another language than mine. We don't tell people from um, Australia or London that they speak incorrectly. We just say you have a funny accent. Um, how would we say that in English? You know, in standard English, standard American English. You know, um, in a fortnight, I'm going to be taking a lift and uh, following a lorry. Now, that could be another language, right? In 14 days, I'm going to go up an elevator and then follow a truck. Okay. If you, um, and what happens is at third grade, kids will react and say, you know, my mom speaks fine. My grandmother speaks fine. You're telling me my grandmother and mother don't speak good English. I'm not sure I really respect you as a teacher. I have to choose now between you and my grandmother and mother. Uh, so you're, you're going to get that fighting because they don't understand that there are two kinds of languages. But if I was with a Creole kid, I'd say, oh, that's how you speak at home. Well, in standard English, this is what we say. So they have a clear English as a second language relationship. I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you will consider joining our breakfast club with mentors. And when you're correcting a kid, you say, oh, I think I understand you. Can you say that in standard English? I, I under, you know, people will understand you in your community, but when we go outside and when we meet people from other countries who've studied English, they study standard English. So how would they say, I'd be going now? I need to go now, or I'm going now, right? And you, you can even write it out. Great music next door, eh? <laughs> Uh, send me your comments. I'm 954-O-MUCHO, and that's the website, buildinginternationalbridges.org.